Hi, everyone. I would like to start off by introducing all of you to a student. Her name is Sophie, and she goes to school here in the greater Vancouver area. When Sophie was in grade three, she wasn't fully comfortable with multiplication and division. She was able to do the work when it looked like the examples that the teacher gave in class, but otherwise, she didn't really get it. That year, she still managed to pass the class with the meeting expectations. In grade six, algebra was introduced and she became more confused because she still wasn't confident with the base operations and now she had to use letters instead of numbers. That year, she got a C plus. By the time polynomials are introduced in grade 10, Sophie is completely lost. She doesn't know what is going on and doesn't feel confident in her ability. So she decides that she's not gonna take pre-calc 11 next year because it would probably be way too hard for her anyways. Now this isn't to say that Sophie is incapable of doing the math. And by the time grade 10 is rolled around, she has long since mastered what was originally challenging for her. But the lack of confidence in her abilities that stemmed from her not understanding the material easily in the first few years causes her to doubt herself and her abilities, which is why she has difficulty learning new material. Had she been given a little extra time at any point along the way to master what was troubling her and to build up her confidence, this whole mess could have been avoided in the first place. Keep in mind, Sophie could just as easily be James or Mark or Tara because she is not a unique case. Many students find themselves in the same situation where a lack of understanding at the base level leads to years of difficulty with the material and a lack of confidence in themselves. This is because our school system disenfranchises students who require additional time to understand the material or whose learning styles differ from the way that, that the teacher presents the material. Fortunately, school systems are not set in stone, even though it might seem that way. And it is possible for them to adapt to better suit the needs of our students. And that is what I'm here to talk to you about today, mastery-based learning. I will start off by defining mastery-based learning explaining its core principles, and highlighting the differences between it and our current system. Then, I will focus on why we need to revamp our current model. And finally, I will provide examples of how mastery-based learning can be implemented into our classrooms. Mastery-based learning, or learning for mastery, is an educational philosophy centered around the idea that a student should not move on from a topic until they feel fully confident in their understanding or until, in short, they have mastered it. The key premise is that every student is able to move at their own pace. This means that if a student excels in a particular subject, then they're able to move forward as soon as they are ready and are not held back. But this also means that students who require additional time or support receive this and are not rushed along before they are ready. Mastery-based learning is not a new idea. It has been around since the early 20th century. In the 1960s, Dr. Benjamin Bloom, an educational psychologist from the University of Chicago, did research into finding the method of group instruction that best compared to one-on-one -on -one tutoring, as it had already been proven that students who were tutored far outperformed students in a classroom where the ratio of teacher to student was greater than one to 10. In this study, they compared th the test results of three different groups of students of similar aptitude and attitude after they had been learning a new material for three weeks. The first group of students, the control, was taught using conventional methods, one teacher to 30 students and was evaluated at the end of the three-week period. The second group, the mastery group, received the same style of instruction from the same teacher as the conventional group, with the same one to 30 ratio. But throughout the three weeks, they were tested regularly and given additional time and resources to help them improve areas where they were struggling. The final group, the tutored group, received one-on-one -on -one education and the same additional support as the mastery-based group, though 
it should be noted they rarely needed to do extra work because they were receiving personalized education. This experiment was conducted on several groups of students ranging in age from grade four to grade eight. The results showed that tutored students performed two standard deviations above the control, meaning that the average tutored student was better than 98% of regular students. This was an expected result because tutoring had already been proven to be more effective. What was the more interesting result was that the mastery-based students performed one standard deviation above the control group, meaning that the average mastery-based student was better than 84% of conventional students. This study demonstrates that mastery-based learning achieves better results than our current system because students are able to master the material to a greater extent before they move on. In our current system, students are taught in a linear fashion where the teacher presents the material, students then have a set amount of time in which to learn it before they are evaluated on their understanding. After this evaluation, all students then move on to the next topic, regardless of whether they received a 90% or a 55% on the test. The fundamental problem with this is that for some subjects, it is essential that you fully understand a concept before you can learn the next one. The obvious example of this is math. Could you learn quadratics without first knowing algebra? And before knowing algebra, you must understand the base operations. But this is also true for language arts, where your ability to participate in class and understand the material is limited by your vocabulary. And your ability to express yourself in writing is dependent on you having mastered grammar fundamentals. Students get passed along with C's, C pluses, and even C minuses, having understood the material well enough that they are not held back to repeat the year. But this doesn't mean that they have understood it sufficiently to be able to easily grasp what comes next. Over the years, this compounds, leading to an ever-increasing gap between the A and C students. It is because of this that students who struggle from a young age are far more likely to have difficulty later on in school. If you build a house on a faulty foundation, it doesn't matter how many times you repaint or re-drywall. Until the underlying problem is addressed, the house will never be structurally sound. It is the same with students. Until the confusion at the base level is addressed, they will continue to be frustrated and to struggle. Unfortunately, addressing the root cause of the problem is not always easy because teachers rarely have the time to give students the individual attention they may need and may not be able to recognize just how much a student is struggling if they are able to complete parts of the material but not all of it. Some parents are in the fortunate position where they can provide their child with the additional support they need, but this is not the case for everyone. And it can be difficult for students to try to sort through the thousands upon thousands of resources that exist, both in print and online, to find the right ones for them. Unfortunately, this lack of understanding and frustration can not only negatively impact students' grades, but also lead to far more serious consequences for their self-esteem and mental health. Years of not understanding the material as quickly as other students and receiving mediocre grades can convince any child that they are not intelligent. They start to believe that they will never succeed because maybe school just isn't their thing. And this mentality creates a negative feedback loop where students believe they won't succeed, which causes them to involuntarily sabotage their performance, which in turn reinforces their belief that they won't succeed. For some students, they're able to mitigate their frustrations at school by finding validation in other areas of their life, such as theater, music, or sports, that give them a sense of belonging and self-confidence. This is not a reality for every student, though, and many don't have a place outside of school to develop a sense of self-worth. We are conditioned to believe that there are smart people and not-so-smart people, and that you were born either one or the other. However, this false dichotomy we have created only harms us because we limit the potential of so many people who just needed a little more time or a different way of explaining to understand. But once they do understand, are capable of doing great things. From everything I've said, 
It may seem as though mastery-based learning is the antithesis of our current model. However, it is, this is not the case. It is easy to introduce principles if we try. Some teachers have already started to do this, and they've had great success. One example is Molly Neelay, a fourth grade teacher from North Carolina. In her math class, she has created a system where students are able to direct their own learning. For each of the prescribed learning outcomes of the year, she has created online pathways that students are able to follow at their own pace, learning more about the, about the material before taking a quiz at the end to check their understanding. Every 12 weeks, all students complete evaluations to measure their progress. If a student receives greater than 80% in a certain area, then they, do no longer, they no longer have to review that subject. If a student receives between 60 and 80%, then they must continue to review on their own. And if a student is below 60%, then they must work with a teacher to shore up their knowledge. Neely structures her class such that she spends the beginning of every lesson teaching new material to the whole class, but then gives the rest of the block to the students, which allows her to focus her attention on the students who require more one-on-one -on -one face-to-face help. She has noted that students are extremely excited to take ownership of their learning, working on their pathways during, during breaks and weekends, and there has been such an improvement in the performance of her students that third and fifth grade teachers at her school are looking into similar projects for their classrooms next year. In fact, in recent years, there has been a lot of buzz around mastery-based learning because we now have access to technology that makes learning at one's own pace so much easier. The classroom teacher no longer has to be the only source of information on a topic, and many students have benefited from having access to different explanations of concepts online. With this advancement in technology, we are able to reshape the way that we teach our students. And as we go about transforming our educational structure to keep up with the digital age, we need to be certain that we are utilizing technology to its fullest potential. I know that uh, today I've talked a lot about how mastery-based learning can be used to help students from falling behind in the first place. But this doesn't mean that it can't also be used to help students who've already fallen behind. It is easy to help students get back on track simply by providing them with access to the support and resources they need. And this does not just mean students who are failing. This also includes the same group of C students that I talked about earlier. The ones who kind of, sort of, maybe get it, but could use some help shoring up their foundations. An example of a program that could be implemented into high schools would be a math bridge program for students coming in from, great, from middle or elementary schools. High schools can work with their catchment schools to identify students who fall into this group that is struggling and can create a program for them in their grade eight or nine year where they spend additional time outside of math class receiving support and reinforcing previous material with teachers and older peer tutors. Another idea could be an English or French workshop program where students can come in again outside of class time and receive help with writing in general or a particular assignment from teachers and peer tutors. These are both concrete solutions to real world problems that could be implemented without the need for redeveloping our entire educational structure. I hope that today I've been able to show that it is easy to introduce the principles of mastery-based learning into our classrooms if we make a conscious effort and view students as the complex individuals they are each with different strengths and weaknesses. Our world is in constant evolution, and our school system should be too. Thank you.